If you have your Bibles, come with me to the book of John, John's Gospel, the sixth chapter, and I'm going to look through verse 60 to 69, John, uh, sixth chapter. Um... When you have it, say, I have it. It should come up on the screens. John 6, 60 through 69, our New King James will be my reading. Many disciples turned away, therefore, I'm sorry. Many therefore, many of this, his disciples, when they heard this, said, it is a hard saying, who can understand it? And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man arise where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Hmm. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe and who would betray him and he kept him around i'm sorry that was another translation <laughs> and he said therefore i have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father but the time, many of, from that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? But Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Look at somebody say, I'm sticking with Jesus. I'm sticking with Jesus. I'm sticking with Jesus. This sixth chapter um, speaks of a discord of Christ being the living bread. If you read through it, you'll pick up a lot in that whole chapter about him being the living bread. The sixth chapter opens with him feeding 5,000 with a few loaves of bread and a few fish. So he starts out with the presentation of bread. The, this introduction gives us plain truth of Christ and who he is. It also speaks to us about our anxiety of need of bread or life-giving substance. The struggle here in this text, as well as in religious circles today, it's a matter of forms and ceremonies. We have to be somehow, we don't feel like we're a believer unless we're under some type of forms and ceremonies and rituals and do's and don'ts. Uh, this is causing many people to leave the church because I can't keep up with the image of being a Christian. Well, let me let you and us off the hook. No one can keep up with the image of trying to be a Christian. It's a form of godliness, but denies the power thereof. So these ceremony things has to go away, which Jesus is bringing out in this context. It is the spiritual expression that brings about a new life-changing experience. Because the spirit works on the inside and manifests itself on the outside. Whatever is possible that your life would become is because of not bread, natural food, but it's because of spirit and that the power of God. Um, Jesus declares that he is the bread that came down from heaven. He is the bread of life or the bread to the world. If your eyes run in that sixth chapter and go over to verse 51, you would see there, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh which I shall give for the life of the world. But Chain and putting, putting clear to us that his flesh of giving was his death on the cross. 
But you, can you imagine the cannibalistic mindset of the disciples saying, this guy's talking about eating him? Because the, the religious carnal mind kicks in. They think it's natural, but clearly it's spiritual. So Jesus, you might be tripping. Now it's difficult for us to roll with you as it is. But now you're talking about eating you, eating your flesh. We cannot eat your flesh. But he's constantly trying to pull them into a spiritual gauge. The sacrificial atonement of his death that we receive is by faith. When we take Holy Communion, we call it Holy Communion. When we take communion, we take it by faith of his blood and his body. That we are becoming one with him and in fellowship with him. And it's a daily communion with him. Man shall not live by word alone, but by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So it's through his word that we get life. And every day you eat this roll, more life begins to permeate out of you. The less bread you eat of this, the less life and spirit you have within you. Amen. It's a sad thing to see a malnutrition saint that has very little scripture at all. You're still saying Jesus wept. You got to get to some other scriptures, baby. If you're going to walk this thing out. Um, in the sixth chapter, I want to just point out a couple of things because my, my notes are <laughs> all over the place. It, it is by faith then we center in on him and he becomes the source of our life. Verse 26, I think I'll start there, the sixth chapter. I'm being a little creflo this morning, so hang with me. Um, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and you are filled. You know, it's, it's something how when you first came to Jesus, you needed a miracle and he did it. Now you're seeking him for natural things and not spiritual things. And you're seeking him for bread, different things that be added to your life. Um, good to stick with Jesus, but just don't stick for the bread. Stick for the greaterness he can do, greatness he can do in your life. He can do more than you can ever ask or think. Verse 33 says, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life again unto the world. This is the bread of God. He that came down from heaven and gives life to, to, to the world. He's bringing them again into a better understanding that you got the right substance for everything you need in life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Verse 34 there, then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. We want more of you. If this is what life is going to be, then give me more Jesus. I need him in, in my life. I want to drop down to verse 35, and Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. Are you getting it yet? It's not the natural bread. It's the spiritual bread. And here he is in front of them, and he's telling them, I am the bread of life. Y'all think they're getting it? Watch it. And he goes on, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth in me shall never thirst. I'm going to satisfy all your thirstiness. <laughs> when you leave me, you'll never be thirsty for anything. I'll fill up all your thirstiness and make sure you are completely satisfied. So when the enemy offers you something, you say, I'm satisfied. I, I, got, I got the real thing. Once I got the real thing, I don't need an imitation. I got the real thing. Lord, you got to help me in here this morning. In verse, uh, what I got? Did I read verse 37? Did I read it? All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I'm reading King James, I'm sorry. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's, these are within those verses of scriptures 30, uh, uh, four, 35, 37, and, 30, and 41. 35, 37, and 41. These are promises that God promised. That you'll never hunger again. 
and the more of him that we consume, the more joy that we have on the inside and settled peace on the inside. Let me drop down to verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him. Because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Verse 42. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Now, y'all remember that story, don't you? You know, it's called an immaculate conception. And Joseph said he never touched Mary. And we just looked around and she was getting bigger. And Joseph hadn't married her yet. But God told her, the angel told him to take her. And they said, this is a holy thing of the Holy Ghost. But it's a cold case. And we don't know just yet. But we know it's Joseph's boy. But it don't look nothing like Joseph. So, but we believe this, that this is Joseph's boy. Whose father and mother we know. But we don't know who this Jesus really is. How is it then that he said that I came down from heaven? It's a spiritual thing. Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and pregnated her. And therefore came Jesus. And to many it's preposterous. It's insane. I'm not dealing with that. You know, y'all brainwash. You should have told me I was brainwashed before I met Jesus. Because I was brainwashed before I met Jesus. But when I met Jesus, I got my brain washed <laughs> and my sins forgiven. Come on, Clinton. So they were very, very, uh, um, how can I say, unsure about this Jesus thing because it was not working seemingly to, to their favor. Moving on over into the text of scripture, sticking with Jesus, Jesus says to them in verse 53, I think it is, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat my flesh, he's driving this thing home, unless you have this constant fellowship with me, flesh of the Son of Man, and drink my blood, that atoning inner working relationship with him. You have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. I'm sticking with Jesus. I want more of him, not less of him. And the eating of the flesh and drinking of the blood is having that communion with him. And that communion with him is by faith in him. That I am taking and becoming a part of his body. 1 John 5 and 1 also speaks of us communing with him and also caring for the natural body, the extension of him. We care for his people because he cares for them. Sticking with Jesus. The precious promises, I revealed them to you. But as we look to the closing of the message, <laughs> Peter begins to become curious in verse 60. And many of the disciples when they heard this, said, this is a difficult saying. Who can, I can't tolerate hearing this. This is very challenging for me to hear this. Hard saying, difficult saying. It might be difficult some of the things Jesus requires or pulls in my spirit and my life to do, but I'd rather go with him. Difficult as it may seem, I'd rather stick with Jesus. Because that other guy I was living with, he was trying his best to kill me every day. Smoke this, drink this, do this, go there, be here. He wouldn't let me sleep. But Jesus brings amount of peace in your life that surpasses all understanding. All understanding. He gives you so much peace, you think you're still on your meds. And you stopped taking them months ago. Oh yeah. He brings a peace. I'm sticking with Jesus. And Jesus has an insightable ear to hear your murmuring. As he did in verse 41. 
he hears what you're not saying. Your internal dialogue is that, well, I, I trust Jesus because mama told me to trust him. But now I'm finding out I got to know him for myself. So in verse, I think, 61, when Jesus knew in himself that the disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this make you trip? Does this offend you? Oh, you want it to be about your religion or your laws, but it's all about me. The bread that your father, don't get ahead of it, don't you? The bread that your fathers ate in the wilderness, they're all are dead. But I am the living bread. I am the life-giving substance of your life. With me, what the devil was trying to do in killing you, I was the life in you that would not let it happen. I need somebody to thank God for life. Because you know the devil wanted to take you out a long time ago. But when he got to where you were, he realized, oh, this belongs to Jesus. I got to be careful around this one. Does this offend you? Okay, let me give you deeper revelation. What if you see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? And that happened in the book of Acts. He brought that out. Also in the book of Matthew, he saw him, they saw him descending, ascend up. But before he ascended, he descended. And they saw him going up. In the book of Acts, he says, why stand you gazing up into the air? The same Jesus that you see going will come back in like manner. He's coming back again. I said, he's coming back again. I said, he's coming back again. John 6 and 32. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that brings life. That recitates you from a dead state to a living state. You're not living on your own accord. It's the spirit that quickens. That gives life back to you. Thank God for the life and the life more abundantly. I need 50 people to say. Yeah. There's a spirit that brings about a recitation. When you're ready to give up on your life and give up on yourself and throw in the towel and walk away from it, the Spirit says, Live. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The flesh or the natural bread profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit in their life. It's the spirit of Hebrews 4 and 12. The words are quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. The flesh profited nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Whisper to somebody, ask them, how many pairs of shoes are in your closet? <laughs> Don't answer. <laughs> Woo, that many? <laughs> you got all this stuff, but it profits nothing. Got all these things, but it profits nothing. When it comes to spiritual things, there's no value to them. There's no value at all. It's the words that I speak. They are spirit in their life. Hmm. But there are some of you, verse 64, that don't believe. You think something else is going to bring about life. Life is not consistent in the things we possess, but life is in and through Jesus Christ. Come on, Clinton, you, you get finish it. He says to them, and I'm down in verse, I think, um, 66 or 66, 67, 67. Then Jesus said unto the 12, oh no, here it is, um, and from 66, and from that time, many of his disciples went back. And walk with him no more. If it gets difficult walking with Jesus, whatever you gotta do, don't go back. You may not understand all this church stuff. We've been around a long time, we gotta kind of navigate it out. You might run into some, some verse, uh, uh, um, 
verse 70 of that sixth chapter, verse 70. You're going to run into some of them. But the worst thing you can do is go back. The worst thing you can do is go back. It would be more frustrating to go back. I was at the airport a few days ago and I was standing in line. I looked at the line. I said, this is ridiculous. I mean, I just want some water. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go down here so I can get the water and come back. I got out of line. Came back. <laughs> line was longer. So I'm not leaving this time. Because somebody said, don't get out of line. And don't go back. And make sure you stick with Jesus. He is the bread. He is the bread of life. They went back and followed him, walk with him no more. Then said Jesus, verse 67, to the 12, will you also go away? Are you going to abandon me also? Because I know it's difficult right now that things are not as it should be. Santa Claus broke down somewhere near Pahrump. And they don't think he's going to make it. Uber and Lyfts are already filled up, so I don't think he's going to get here. You're not getting what you need right now. It's a lean time right about through here. The natural things are very precious and they're not there. But you got some Jesus left. You may not have all that you want, but you have all that you need because you got some Jesus. Cannot be reduced, it can only be increased. It can only be magnified, it cannot be shrunk. Things are difficult, but will you go away? Thank God for Peter. Peter said in verse 68, answered unto him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. There is no place to go. We've checked it out and we realize that nobody can do for us what you can do. We've seen you feed people. We've seen you healed people. We've seen you open blinded eyes. Miracle after miracle after miracle. You transformed even our lives to be something greater. You chose us out of the world. You could have picked any 12 you wanted, but you picked us. Fishermen, cussers, tax collectors, doctors, people at the bottom of the barrel, the base things of the world. You chose us and you saved us. So you have to keep us. Went through my whole family and said, here is one. And it started the whole process of saving my whole family. If I've come this far with Jesus, I think I'll go all the way with Jesus. Because he is the best thing that ever happened to me. Where we going to go now? What? Where are we going to go? I gave up my boat. I threw away my net. I left my corporate job. I said, I'll follow you wherever you go. Where I'm going to can't go back to the devil because I know what he wants to do. So where are we going to go? You have given us power and empowered us to serve. The words that we speak are your words and you back those words up. You save people through your words as you speak through this vessel. Where I'm going to go, who's going to endorse me like that and give me the authority to tell demons behave and go home? Who's going to give me the power to overcome all the power of the adversaries? Who's going to give me the victory to get up when I don't feel good and say, I shall still stand my ground? Who's going to give me that type of mindset with no money in my pocket? I feel like a multi, multi, multi millionaire because I got Jesus. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? I want you to value this morning. Next time you walk in your pantry, I want you to value what I need ain't up in here. Next time you walk in your closet, I want you to value what you need ain't in that closet. Next time you look in that mirror, I want you to tell yourself what I need, I already got it. It's like fire. Shut up. Woo. Shake your neighbors. Say, oh, I got the real thing. I got the real thing. This thing will bring you back from a low state. 
will bring you back to a high place will bring you back from emptiness to full what you got on the inside is life and the devil can't kill life he can't do nothing with your life because God gave it to you and he can't take it from you where are we gonna go you have the words of eternal life you have revealed to us the secret to life you have given us a plan for our life so we wake up every day with the expectation that you're going to fulfill your plan oh god some of y'all too stiff for me tell your neighbor you ain't alive for yourself God gave you another day to live for him. You miss that. You're not alive because you're up in there so cute. God kept you alive for him. Your existence is not for you, but it's for him that gave you the life that you are living. Oh, I know. Not only have you given us this wonderful expression, Peter goes on and preaches a message in verse 69. He said, and we believe and are sure you are the Christ. You are the anointed one. The search is over. I ain't gonna look nowhere else. I'm sure I got the right one. I got Jesus and that's enough. I'm sure he's the one. I tested it and I seen tell your neighbor you don't know how I was delivered but nobody but Jesus could deliver me out of this craziness and set me free completely this is a Jesus job right here Jesus breaks every chain every setup destroys every yoke because of the anointing in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm sure I'm sure I got the right one Say, I'm sure he's a make way maker. Say, I'm sure he's a door opener. Say, I'm sure he can do it. If he can't do it, it can be done. I'm sure he's a way maker. I'm sure he's all powerful. I'm sure he's coming back again. I'm sure I got life more abundantly. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. your hands Father I thank you for leading me in the right direction not in false and confused religions difficult for many to understand to some is foolishness to some is barbaric but for we that believe Christ is the power of God. You are my hope. You are my joy. You are my peace. It is in you that I live. It is in you that I move. And I have my being. You came that I might have life and I might have it more abundantly running over running out of my life running out of my lap life in the midst of darkness life in the midst of loneliness life abandoned and forsaken but I still have life more abundantly I'm sticking with Jesus it may be difficult because I didn't plan to be in this place in this place in my life at this time but I still got Jesus and with him I know I'll make it out I'll make it through 
and I'll get to the other side. Thank you, Jesus, for sticking with me. Thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me life once again. And as long as I'm alive, as long as I got breath, as long as I got a voice, everybody will know it was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus.